Hello, let's look at some problems for class 7 maths Olympiad. So we would these problems specifically focus on Olympiads. So let's try to uh, look at those. So here is our uh, very first problem. So it is related to geometry. So geometry is typically very simple in these exams. So definitely a very scoring question. We should try to score well in it. So the first thing that you will notice is that the the question is asking us to find out the area of the shaded region. I don't know if it's clear to you or not, but the shaded region is this. Right? So these two triangles right here are actually shaded. The question also tells us that there is a circle inside a square. So it is a square and inside it we have a circle. So the key here being the word square. Square means that if this side is 12 plus 12, 24, then this side also would be 24. That is the first thing we can take away from it. Pretty simple so far. Now if you look at it, one of these triangles, take any one of these triangles, we know what is the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle is equal to half into base into height. We know that, it's pretty basic. In this triangle, if you look closely, this angle is 90 degree. This could be the base, 24, and then this could be the height, 12. So we know everything. Similarly, in this triangle also, that would be the case. The, the two triangles are exactly equivalent. So that again would be the case. So our total area for the shaded region would be half base into height plus half into base into height, which is nothing but our base into height, which is nothing but our base is 24 in each of these cases into our height, which is 12. And if you calculate this, this comes out to be 288 centimeter square. So this D becomes our right answer. Pretty simple, right? Again, approach these problems very systematically. That is the key. Now this question to many on the very first go would look very, very complicated. It might almost be conceived as an insurmountable problem. But I'll show you in one second that that is indeed not the case. The only thing, the only concept we need to really understand here is the distributive property, the distribution of multiplication over addition. Now, that is a very important property. What does it say? It tells me that if I have three numbers A, B and C and I write it as A into B plus C, then this multiplication actually distributes over addition. Right. So I can I will multiply this A with each of these numbers and then I can add it. I can do this. Now let's apply this particular property in reverse. So we'll start from this side and go here. So how can I write this problem? I can write this the first term as 4 raised to power 61 into 1 plus 4 raised to power 61 into 4. This term is 4 raised to power 61 into 4 square. And then last term is 4 raised to power 61 into 4 cube. That is what this actually means. If I expand it, this is what this comes out to be. I have taken 4 raised to power 61 common in each of these cases, in for each of these numbers. Now let's write it. So this, this is the way these numbers are written now, this way. Now let's go back and write it like this with a bracket. I can very well do that. This becomes 4 raised to power 61 and this 1 plus this 4 plus this 4 square plus this 4 cube. So far so good. Now it looks very simple. Now it looks like something which we can solve, which we can go forward with, right? I mean these were very very complicated numbers. Now we have done, turned out to be now this looks like a much simpler expression. So here, if I look at it a little more closely, this becomes 4 square, which is nothing but 16, and 4 cubes, which is nothing but 16 fours are 64. So this is nothing but 64. Now look at this, my friends. Very, very important thing I am telling you right away. You should know, please, you should know, you should by heart, squares and cubes of numbers 
till at least five if possible till eight or ten right squares and cubes it is very important very important vital okay because these are these exams don't have that much don't give you that much time now if you total all of these what do we what do we get this is 64 plus 4 which is very simple we can find that uh, six, uh, 16 plus 4 which becomes 20 okay so this 16 plus 4 becomes 20 and this is 64 plus 1 which is 65 65 plus 20 is 85 so my friends we can directly arrive at this answer very simply we can add it we don't need to use uh, write those down this becomes 461 85 this is how this particular sum can be expressed now what do we see here we see that this particular factor can only be divisible by a multiple of 4 or multiple of 2 right this this particular factor now this particular factor the 85 it is divisible by 5 and it is also divisible by 17 <laughs> again my friends table of 17 table still 20 we should know i mean it is our uh, our duty <laughs> in some sense to just uh, buy hard those so now I have several factors here. There are number of factors of two and four, and then there are factors five and seventeen. And that that is those are the numbers from which this particular number would be divisible. So from the choices, the only thing that we can say is this particular number would be divisible by seventeen. It would also be divisible by five. It will be divisible by a number of multiples of two, right? Number of multiples of two. It would also be divisible by. But from the choices, this number would definitely be divisible by. 17 because 17 appears here in the multiplication in the factors of this number now the thing here is the thing that we have seen so far is you should know factorization you should know tables you should also at the same time know the squares and cubes of numbers to remember these things to buy hard these things by writing down on a page of piece of paper is slightly difficult okay i am not really recommending that you do that but if you are solving number of problems then these things would come to you automatically naturally they'll get into you okay naturally these things would come to you they'll you just remember them if you are solving number of problems now here is another question this particular question is slightly tricky i would say but again not very complicated there are actually two ways of going about solving this problem one of these ways would take much longer than the other so we'll we'll first start with the slower way which i am recommending that you not take but again just for the sake of it we'll we'll do it the question is we have to find the area of unshaded region so this is the shaded region all of these four little squares i don't know if they are squares or not we don't know because the dimensions have not been given and it is not given in the figure that this is a square or this is a square so we should not assume anything which is not given in the question important okay it might look like this is a square but it is not a square because it's not given in the question it might look like these three four are squares but again not squares okay so don't assume anything not given in the question so the thing is again going back to the question we are required to find the area of so this is the shaded region and we are required to find the area of unshaded region which is this black plus if you will now some of the students would right away start solving it like this so this is a rectangle with sides 2y plus a okay so this is y this again is y and this is a so total length becomes 2y y plus y is 2y plus a and the length of this one is of course similarly 2x plus a so this is the dimension this is the area of the large rectangle and from this we are going to subtract these small things right? these small rectangles each of this has length of x and a breadth of y or width of y so our area becomes xy there are four of those so this would be minus 4xy now one thing that you will straight away notice here is that this multiplication is complicated okay so it might take some time so let's not even go here let's try to approach this problem a little bit simply see if we can come up with a simple thing simple solution if you notice there is a rectangle here this plus is made up of two rectangles one is this one right this rectangle right here the long one right the long rectangle and the second one is this flat rectangle <laughs> right here okay so i should have used another color but uh, well 
now I have already used it, so <laughs> we'll just have to deal with it. So this is the other rectangle, okay? And we are required to find the area of this rectangle, right? This rectangle, the long one, right here, plus the area of the small rectangle. Now I'll use another color, uh, this other rectangle right here. Okay, This is the area that we are required to find out, this plus this. But of course, the center portion, we have calculated twice. We have counted twice. So I need to remove this center region. Okay, so that is the idea that we are going to proceed. So what is the area of this longer rectangle, the one which is uh, sort of uh, vertical? What is the area of that? It is the this side, which is A into the other side, which is Y, Y and A. That is 2Y plus A. Very simple, not complicated at all. Similarly, what is the area of this other one? It would be similar. So this height is A and then of course this length is X plus X plus A, right? So X plus X plus A. So this becomes 2X plus A. That is our uh, area of this rectangle, right? The, the, the long one, the one shaded in blue. And of course, I need to subtract the area of the center region because I have counted it twice. With both the rectangles, I have counted it. So that becomes A into A. So this becomes A square. Very simple. And notice, this time, we are not, we don't have any complicated multiplications. It is actually very simple. So this comes out to be 2YA minus A, sorry, plus A square plus 2XA plus a square minus a square plus a square minus a square cancel. They are zero, of course. And then you are left with 2ya plus 2xa plus a square, which of course makes our this choice, the choice C correct. Now, one of the things I would request you, I would invite you at this point to really understand one thing in this question without even lifting the pencil. One, one thing that we can definitely say without lifting the pencil, right? One thing that we can definitely say is that x, the result has to be symmetric with respect to x and y. If you look at the rectangle, they are used, the x and y are used exactly in a similar fashion, right? There is a x here, there is a y here, there is a here, there is a here, there is y here, there is x here. So x and y are used symmetric. What does that mean symmetric? It means that if I replace x and y in the problem, it doesn't change the problem at all. And therefore, if I replace X and Y in the solution, it should not change the solution at all. And therefore, the correct answer has to be symmetric with respect to X and Y. Only two of the choices are that way. Only two of the choices, A and C are symmetric with respect to X and Y, where, there, where the answer does not change when I replace X with Y and Y with X. And therefore, the answer has to be between A and C, okay? So in this case, we naturally have to calculate, but in some questions, you might completely do away with calculations just by looking at the problem a little more closely, just by finding out some key insights into the problem. Now, this is a probability question, okay? And at this stage, uh, I'm sure in your schools, you have not been, you might have only have been introduced to probability, if at all, okay? Most of the, most of the schools would not teach probability at this stage. But uh, probability is indeed asked, okay? And the concept itself, the, that the reason is, the concept itself is very simple. The concept is not difficult. So let's look at the concept of probability by means of this problem. What is the problem asking me? The problem is asking me that if I draw a face card, right? What is the, what is a face card in a pack of cards? It is the king, queen, and jack. Okay? Those, those cards are known as face cards or court cards. So those are the court cards. How many court cards, court cards do I have? How many face cards do I have? There are three in each of the suits. Club, diamond, heart and spade. Each of those suits have three court cards or three face cards each. So what is the total number? Total number is 12. Of course, what, are the, what is the total number of cards that I have? 52. What does this represent, this fraction? I have written a fraction here. It is the fraction of the face card or with respect to the 
total number of cards that is what this fraction means what is what does it mean when when drawing a card when when we draw a card what would it mean it would mean that if i am drawing a card and then replacing it back into the pile okay so i drew one card i put it back into the pile i took a look at it and then put it back into the uh, pile of cards it means that if i were to draw 52 cards at random right so i shuffle them i draw one card i shuffle them i draw one card if i do this 52 times the chances are most of the time or on an average i would draw a face card 12 times that is what this fraction represents that if i were to draw 52 cards one at a time take a look at it replace it back into the pile if i do this experiment 52 times on an average 12 times i'll get a face card and that is very natural because there are 12 face cards so you will say that oh yes the the it would be proportional to the number of face cards there are and yes we understand that right we can we can sort of intuitively understand that that if i were to do this experiment 52 times 12 times out of those 52 randomly if i am drawing the card 12 times i should get a face card and this is what this probability this is what this fraction is representing and we call this the probability so what what is the probability mean i am doing this experiment 52 times 12 times i'll get face card so what are the chances that i get the face card one time if i do it once only what are the chances these are the my chances for one experiment for one such drawing these are my chances of getting a face card right? 52 you get 12 so for one you would get 12 by 52 unitary method again and that is the probability if you simplify it the answer comes out to be 3 by 13 and that is the correct answer now this again is a tricky problem it has been asked okay and the problem is there only for you to waste time on it <laughs> unfortunately these questions are asked so the thing here is there is a graph given and you should know how to read such graphs this is simple bar chart uh, we call it uh, multi bar chart because there are multiple stacks uh, every year so that's why that way uh, and what does each of these stack mean? It means it represents a subject. So this one represents Hindi, the gray one represents English and the even lighter gray one represents mathematics. So it's pretty simple to read it for each year such data has been given. The question is asking us out of total number of students who opted for the given three subjects in 2009. So, okay, notice that the data is given for total number of students who opted for the given three subjects, who opted for either Hindi, English or Mathematics, one of these three subjects or both, okay, out of total number of students who opted for the given three subjects in year 2019, so we are talking about this year, 38% were girls. So if I, if I were to total these three numbers, okay, I can, I can sort of read them from the chart here, right, I can read, read, read them off from the chart. If, if I total them, what I would found, find is, 38% of this total is actually girls. Now, that is simple that we can understand. It is asking us how many boys opted for not the out of total in mathematics. Now the percent we are being given, the percent girls has been given in total. Whereas the question is asking us for one particular subject. And of course we cannot assume that just because in total there were 38 girls, in mathematics also there will only be 38 girls there might be more there might be less we have no data on that and therefore this particular in this particular question the answer would be not applicable or in the sense that data is not given data is not sufficient okay so notice very carefully that these problems are not uh, are in the sense that they don't require anything special from you but in itself they are non trivial Right? They are not requiring any other mathematical skills which you might already have, but they are not trivial. You need to have approached them very cool-headedly. You have to read the problems carefully. Hopefully, this class helped you. And if it did, please put uh, in the comments below. If you have questions, don't hesitate. Again, put them in the comments below. Thank you very much.